Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to present two different studies that we have conducted uh, in the team, trying to elicit two different, well, three different uh, self-transcendent emotions and try to see so cool. whether they can so boost cool. the so-called self-transcendent emotions. Por si acaso no la vez, un tipo de que la okay. um, trying to analyze, first of all, the pattern of self-transcendent, whether they, they boost a superordinate identification with whole humanity on the one side, and uh, to see different uh, outcomes that these, two, these three emotions might produce in different terms. We are starting from the idea that these three emotions uh, are, are powerful in the sense that they can boost different, the, the birth of different groups and they can enhance different social identities. Uh, we wanted to extrapolate this with your idea of uh, global identification in these two studies. So, uh, there are participating different people from the group, of course, uh, Nekane, Darío, Itzar Fernández, and Pedro Boaca as well. And here we go. In, in the main idea, we are following the one of, there have been a couple of ways of theorizing self-transcendence, like the Maslow model of peak experiences. Uh, you mentioned, Darío, previously, the idea of uh, of health-related conditions in the last part of life, like uh, Susan Reed, her studies, as well as other theoreticals. And we are following the description made by Bernard Rimet and Patti van Kappelen in the sense that there are a couple of emotions, a positive experience, emotional experiences, that first of all, are not, the stimuli is not completely directed to yourself, on the one side, it's like a third way of experiencing emotion or watching other people experience these emotions and on the other side they have to sustain uh, or they have to boost more superordinated identifications or connection with other peoples and not particularly with yourself. Uh, what do we know about these different emotions? The, there are a couple of experimental and non-experimental studies with the emotions of awe and elevation. I'm going to continuously watching, uh, showing these, these little symbols, awe with the letter A and moral elevation or inspiration if you want with the letter E. And particularly, different studies show that particularly with awe there is a sense of diminishing the self or diminishing the concerns of ourself um, a broader scope in processing, in processing different information and several connections with <coughs> spirituality related beliefs and so on. In the case of moral elevation, the stimuli they have using usually cases of feeling moved or touched by moral exemplars, as Jonathan Haidt would say, and they have found an intention, a greater intention to connect with the rest of the people, reduction in prejudice and so forth. Particularly in the case of Kamamuta, there is no available so much literature about the possible effects Kamamuta or feel moved by love. But we are speculating that if there is something that is so-called an emotional experience of self-transcendence, these three emotions, even though they might have some things in common, they should they should uh, they should tap at least the general idea of self-transcendence or diminishing the self-related interest. Uh, as we were talking previously, for example, all comes from the literature, well, a long history of literature from McDowell and different people theorizing uh, admiration, wonder, and awe. You also have a book, and we were speaking about that, you were also describing uh, what it would be like prototypical awe, and it's this sense of connecting with something bigger, and you would might need a sense of uh, accommodation, this new information, because it's not completely understandable for the subject. In the case of elevation, Jonathan Haidt sustains that this emotion is the emotional reaction toward exemplars of high morality, like really good people in the world or people who sacrifice themselves in order to help other people or sustain different kinds of relationships. And particularly, the Kamamuta framework comes from the literature of the four modes of social relationship in the model of Alan Fisk. And in one model, communal relationships, where this is based on horizontal relationship, communal relationship in which you feel connected towards a person or a group, you are not indivisible in the sense that they belong to you and you belong to them. And in emotional 
intensification of this pattern, this should be the motion of Kamamuta. Other frameworks uh, theorize this emotion I mean, I mean as move, move it by law to others. Exactly. others. Exactly. That is the framework of Kamamuta. But other people conceptualize this emotion as a general a category of feeling moved or feeling touched. But usually in the Kamamuta framework, as Darío said, is feeling moved by love towards others. So we wanted to uh, elicit these three emotions and try to see what they sustain in terms particularly of <laughs> in-group relationships and out-group relationships toward the idea of uh, global identification. And in the first study, we elicited three emotions. We elicited awe, elevation, and mirth. We used mirth of humor as a control condition. And the elicitation in this study was based on a presentation, an animated presentation. You're going to see the stimuli right after this, uh, this slide. And afterward, each individual had to, had to recall a previous experience where they might have felt this particular emotion. And after that, we were asking about to measure emotions, transcendent beliefs, global identification, and as well, an in-group identification. In the second study that we conducted in three different universities, in the University of Grass Country, in the University of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Ecuador, and with the students of the Universidad Distancia uh, in Spain, we focus on these two previous emotions, O and elevation, but we also wanted to add Kamamuta, which is feel moved by love, and this approach was elicited by videos. You are going to see a little fragment of each video. I would say previously that the elicitation, you are going to see the difference in both studies, and the correlates that we wanted to measure were intention to helping uh, others, through an NGO, like uh, some people might call it as collective action as well, because you might depend, you, your helping intentions might depend on other people's helps intentions as well. We were measuring well-being and also fusion of identity with everyone in the world. This was a proxy, it's a pictorial scale, and was used as a proxy as global identification, but in terms of the length of the questionnaires and the application, we wanted a, a shorter measure of identification with something bigger. So, in study one, people were showing, uh, were watching different uh, magnificent nature-related uh, pictures as well as monuments, and they were given a little description of what this emotion might be. This is the emotion that is felt in front of something that is giving you like an immensity sensation, something that is extremely rich, and such as, for example, an amazing environment, landscape, monuments, or even the religious experiences. After that, each person had to recall a moment where they might have felt that emotion. In the condition of uh, elevation, they were giving uh, exemplars of high morality. All of them were balanced by sex, and they were these kind of examples. The example and a little short description of what they, what they uh, achieved in their life. In the case of Mandela, for example, he was an activist and ex-president of South Africa, and also a Nobel Peace Awarded. And in this case, Malala Yousafi, uh, an activist and a blogger, and she also was awarded a Nobel Peace. All of the people that appear in the elevation condition were at least awarded for Nobel Peace Award. And finally, in the mirth condition, it was like we tried to elicit humor. Actually, we didn't try to elicit like ha ha ha. We tried to elicit like ha, ah, that's funny. Like that reaction. It's very difficult, yeah, because my jokes are not the best. You can see, for example, this is Grosjean Marx. This is the quote that he says that it's better be quiet and everyone thinks you're a fool than speaking and everyone will realize you're a fool. And with Ellen the generalist, he said, accept, you have to accept really who you are unless you are a serial killer. Yeah, they are not really haha -ha for fun, but they are interesting. And both uh, these two conditions, both elevation and mirror, were balanced by sex. So, the result, the main result that we are finding in order to assess whether we were eliciting self-transcendent emotion, we were using the Fredrickson scale, and uh, given her classification of emotions, uh, she separates emotions that might be self-referent or self-transcendent emotions. In the family of self-referent, she gathers, among others, amusement, interest, joy, and pride, and as you can see, each condition, O and elevation against mir, they were non Significant statistical significant differences, but in the category of self transcendence, including words such as describing like awe, gratitude, hope, inspiration, and love, 
each emotion individually was significantly higher than the condition near, so we concluded that the elicitation was uh, indeed successful. Nevertheless, we did not find <coughs> any direct change in the outcome measures such as transcendent beliefs, global identification, celebration of global community, either in group identification. The only direct effect that we found was the manipulation effect which was given by the increase in subtranscendent emotion in both uh, transcendent conditions. Nevertheless, we were thinking about and we were watching different studies using constantly using emotions as indirect measures, as mediators, so we conducted a several, several mediation models. The mediation model that we were constantly using was based on the preacher and higher uh, specifications to conduct it, in which the self-transcendent stimuli, in this case, this magnificent nature, this monument, and in the elevation condition, these uh, exemplars of morality, are going to induce self-transcendent emotions, and through self-transcendent emotion and non by self referent emotion, we are going to have higher scores in the scales of self-transcendent beliefs, in the scales of connection with the whole humanity, and so forth. And we were finding like a very consistent pattern in which self-transcendent emotion increases the transcendent belief and global identification belief and the celebration as well of global community but they were not increasing the identification with an in-group category, which in this case were the classmates that they had. So in all, well, we were measuring as well with a different scale and we are finding the exact same pattern. So we, might, we can conclude that self-transcendent stimuli through self-transcendent emotion are increasing beliefs on transcendent and identification with whole humanity, but this does not hold for in-group measures. And when we contrasted everything and tried to see whether self-referent emotions are also mediators, they are not at all. So, this is uh, the study number one. In study number two, we wanted to do something a little bit more overt in the sense of eliciting more powerfully elicit self-transcendent emotions, and we conducted three conditions as well. In the condition of all, we, they watch a video of Mongolian riders in, in the in Navale, in Asia, I don't know where the valley is. That video was taken from the BBC, a BBC documentary, and the, the little clip is centered in nature, it, it, it contains amazing landscape and a sense of vastness that is describing uh, Heidi and Fellner theory. In the condition of Mandela, eh, oh, condition of Mandela, sorry, in the condition of <laughs> elevation, well, we might call it condition of Mandela because it was the story of Mandela actually, and it was a story of several slides with a music, and it was telling the story of Nelson Mandela, how he overcome all of these years in prison, and after that he, he was like a great example for the South African story. They do not contain what Dario told us about he was super open to neoliberalism and stuff, so the idea is more or less, okay, this is a positive uh, portrayal of Mandela in the case of this video. And finally, in the, ta in the Kamamuta condition, Kamamuta framework says that you need an intensification of communal sharing relationship, but in order to do so, you have to tell a story, you have to tell a plot. And in this story, this is a video that has been used in other studies to elicit Kamamuta, and it shows the story of a little kid, and due to what, due to one person did to that little kid long years ago, he then became a doctor and helped a family. And that is the climax when they say, okay, that is the identification of communal sharing. And uh, you are going to watch a little bit clip of the three of them. A little extract of the three of them. Okay. <coughs> so, this is a little extract. Oh. No se ve, compañero. Eh, wait a moment. Sí. No te estamos viendo la pantalla, no se lo no. Vale. Ahí sí. This is a little extract of the all condition. This is a little, as I told you, a little extract from the BBC documentary. And the documentary's name is Nature. It's, it's a really, really nice and this of different story about the world.
A great aspect of this video for comparison about these four theoretical terms is that it's not highly focused on human interaction among themselves. I think the most salient aspect is nature. So it fits the framework proposed by Jonathan Heidegger in And this is a short fragment of... Le están pegando el latigazo a los caballos. That aspect is super important because we were receiving feedback from our university students and many of them say it was super nice until they were hitting the horse. Ah. And with that they could not detach from that. Dile que a George se le huele pegan a la gente, eso es más bonito todavía. Ah. ¿En cuántos minutos en total? Eh, the first is about 3 minutes per, eh, 30, this is about 4 minutes, and the last is 3 and something. And the video of Mandela is this. It constantly depict, well, several like key terms of the story of Mandela with a high emphasis afterwards <laughs> in a couple of minutes about what he did and what he overcome. For another aspect, one, another positive side of this particular video is that in the framework of elevation, they, they portray like... Okay. No? Okay. But this elicit at the same time uh, inspiration, compassion, and a kamamuta. What I was saying about the story of Mandela is also, <coughs> I would say, we, we discussed this a couple of times and we really think, and I really think particularly that there is a lot of ecological validity because in the sense that Mandela's video is mostly the figure of Mandela, 
The, the three conditions are incredibly different in the sense of a stimuli. You might say that, of course, there are a lot of negative elements in the story of Mandela. There might be even like sadness or nostalgia. But I think we can all agree that you might, or maybe I, because I'm already contaminated by Kamamuta framework, I really continue feeling like something like a little bit something warm in the chest, like I'm not going to cry about this video because I've seen it so many times. But I really feel moved in this sense. So the three conditions we have like, but pretty much enough power, statistical power to conduct several analyses. And what we did was analyzing whether each separated condition increases the, directly increases the identification with all humanity in the measure of fusion of identity with everyone in the world, and well-being and the intention to help. And we are finding, I'm going to, for, the, for tomorrow's presentation, I'm going to change everything as you said, like more uh, graphical. But what we were doing was uh, several regressions in order to check in the last step whether they are increasing. This is only for the O condition. In step one, we were including age and sex, particularly because the, um, the data set from the Universidad Distancia was extremely different from the other two ones. And in the second step, we were including transcendent values, which we already knew that in previous studies, correlational studies, they were connected in the intensity of these three emotions. Schwartz values, exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the final step, we are including the emotion. Mm -hmm. And we are finding that if this is the O condition. O predicts health intention and predicts fusion of identity with everyone in the world. But they do not predict directly well-being. And this model holds for elevation, in this case, elevation explains health intention and fusion with identity with everyone in the world, but not well-being, and it happens exactly the same with Kamamuta. We wanted then to maybe see whether different universities, there were differences in the application of the procedure just to check another further control, and we conducted several meta-analyses, and we were finding in all of them that here is the O condition, this is the elevation condition, and this is the Kamamuta condition, I'm going to structure it much better for tomorrow, and there is no heterogeneity <coughs> in the sense that, okay, the three, con the three universities are pretty much the same. And in this case, O predicts the intention of helping and predicts the identity diffusion. <coughs> it happens the same with elevation, it happens the same with Kamamuta, but they do not predict directly any changes in well-being. So, in short, what we are finding that the three emotions fulfill this criteria of connecting us with something bigger. And this connection is manifested on the one side in the identification with a social identity that includes everyone in the world, and also the intention to help them. Study number one shows that indirectly, I would say that mainly because of the category of the stimuli in which they had to recall, and when we were analyzing the recalling events, they were super different one from another. And it was directly from study two, which is, well, we had more uh, statistical power as well. The videos were a little bit stronger. So we might say, we can say that the three of them fulfill on the one side with the self-transcendent uh, characteristic of self. Uh, take home message, well, like, this represents all. This represents elevation, this Kamamuta. And these, in laboratory examples, they they might uh, fulfill a role of connecting us with something bigger, in this case, identification with all humanity. So this is the presentation. Thank you very much.